a very natural action of the group of uh, permutations on n letters, say, on the ring of polynomials in n variables is the one that permutes the n variables. So I want to consider a simple exercise and use it as an excuse to work out some properties of the symmetric group of permutations and also of group actions and orbits. So here is the exercise. We want to find the subset f of, uh, say, permutations over four letters. So the subset of such permutations that leave uh, some expression invariant. And the expression is the following. So here I mean that the additive sum is to be considered commutative and also the product of two variables is commutative. Now, this setting, of course, then can be interpreted as follows. We have the polynomial f as a polynomial, say, of, with coefficient z in four variables. And we have an action of the symmetric group S4, which is the obvious one, permuting the independent variables and therefore automatically acting on all polynomials in these variables. Now F, in our case, the capital F as is described as a set of permutations in S4, that with respect to this action, uh, leave f or map f into itself or leave it invariant. In other words, this is what is called a stabilizer group of f. Now, our point the point of this exercise is first of all to describe this stabilizer. So how would you how would we find all permutations of S4 that uh, satisfy this property here of leaving this uh, polynomial invariant? So how to find this stabilizer? Well um, of course we can, one brutal force way would be to go through all the elements of S4, which are four factorial, therefore 24 elements, and check if they leave this special invariant. Or we try uh, some other strategy. For example, we divide into cases, into four cases, depending on where, uh, say, the first variable x1 is uh, sent to. So, in other words, if I have a permutation, say, sigma uh, in f that leaves f invariant, then obviously, uh, so where the, the first has any permutation in S4, uh, sigma of x1 will be either x1, x2, x3, or x4. So I suggest to analyze the, all the cases separately, so we get four cases. And see, and let's see if by analyzing case by case we get some, some conditions that uh, restrict the possibilities for sigma. So here we go with case one is where x1 is sent in itself. Then, of course, by hypothesis, sigma has to preserve the polynomial f, and therefore, the, in particular, the expression x1 times x2 
and so we have necessarily sigma of x2 has to be equal to x1, right? In other words, uh, because sigma of x1 is x2, which will be equal to x1, since x1 is fixed, sigma of x2, and this has to be equal to x1, x2. So this is the reason. So x, x2 will have to be sent to x1, and so we, we remain with two possibilities, namely either x3 is sent to itself, or x3 and x4 are switched. So in the first case, of course, sigma is just the identity. Each element is, each of the four letters is sent to itself, or only three and four are exchanged. So sigma is the permutation written in cycle notation as three and four. So let's see the second case, namely S uh, sigma of x1, say, is x2. Now, in this case, uh, of course, for the same reason, the expression x1, x2 has to be preserved, and therefore x2 has to be sent to x1 necessarily. So again, we are left with two cases, either uh, 3 and 4 are left fixed one by one or exchanged. In other words, uh, either the sigma only exchanges 1 and 2, so it's a cycle of 1, 2, or ex it exchanges 1, 2, and 3 or 4. So the other case is that sigma is the product of 1, 2. And three, four. Next, let's consider the third case. So here, for a similar argument, or with the same argument, if x1 is sent to x3, then since the expression, so here the expression sigma applied to x1, x2 is going to be equal to x3 and whatever is sigma of x2. And therefore, of course, here we see that sigma of x2 has to be x4 in order to obtain the, the expression x3, x4. So sigma of x2 is equal to x4. So then here we have again two possibilities, either the permutation of x elements 1, so 1 to 3, so x1 to x3, and so independently namely x2 to x4, or the permutation that sends say 1 to 3, 2 to 4, and then for 3 and 4, uh, which in the, not as in the first case here, where 3 is sent to 1 and 4 is sent to 2, so the, the other scenario here is that 4 is sent to uh, 1 and 3 is sent to 2. So in other way, in other words, if you want to write this um, as a cycle or as a product, or as a product of cycle, let's see. Here we have one, two, three, and then three is sent to two. So one, two, one and two, then two is sent to four, and then of course four is sent to one. So it's actually one cycle of length. Or of order four. Okay, so that was the third case. And now let's see the final case where sigma of x1 is equal to x4. 
then for the same argument we are forced for sigma x2 to be equal to x3 so again we have two cases to see one is that simply one is sum to four two is sum to three and then the final case we have Well, one for sure we know has to be sum to four and two to three, but here the other possibility is that three is sum to one and therefore four is sum to two. And this is of course uh, one four two. So again, this is a cycle of order four. So here we have we have worked out the complete list of these elements, and uh, in particular we see that uh, F, uh, this group, the stabilizer is a group of order eight. We have two times four elements. So let's move on. What about the parity? and the order of these elements. Let's compute for each of these uh, sigmas uh, the parity and order. First, let's, let me fix some, some names for these. I will call sigma zero the identity. We don't care about this. For our analysis, then I will call, say, sigma one, cycle one, two, sigma two, cycle three, four, and uh, sigma three, this, this one, one, two, three, four, and then four. There is no real meaning of this numbering. It's just my personal um, preference. I would call that sigma five, this one, which is a product of two cycles. So you see my order is by somehow ascending complex uh, length of complexity. And then we have the two big bigger cycles, which I call sigma six and sigma seven. So we have now numbered all the eight elements of this F. So let's move on and compute and compute uh, the order and the parity of those. Okay. So first, what about the order? Uh, well, the order of permutation, uh, in this case, is quite immediate since we are dealing either with cycles, with simple cycles, therefore the order is the same as the length, uh, or in the, here in the middle case, we have, we have the product of two cycles, but in, in each of these cases, uh, the two cycles are disjoint, and therefore the order is the least common multiple of the orders and therefore and therefore here the answer is that all uh, all our elements are of order two of course apart the identity but uh, and the two last ones sigma six and sigma seven have obviously order four So, of course, in, the, in this case, the, the group is, the, the description is quite simple, but in general, so in general, for more complicated cycles, for more complicated permutations, how would we go, what is a general procedure to compute the order, unless we want to apply the single permutation and decompose it to itself multiple times until we find the identity. But of course, there is a quicker way because we have a general fact that I suggested to prove as an exercise, for example, if you want to compute, say, uh, so the, the trick is to write your permutation as the product of these joint cycles, and you know that this is always possible, it's easy to prove this. So you have, so 
that C1 is a K with joint. cycles. So this joint means that the, the same letter doesn't repeat. And then what happens is that the order of this element, the order of this product, is the least common multiple of the orders of this uh, CJ. Of the orders. CK. So this would be um, would be a smart smart way in general, or if you want even an algorithm, as long as you have the algorithm that writes any permutation into this joint cycle. So this condition here, of course, with this joint is um, is um, fundamental. So, for example, uh, let me make an example, say in another in the group of permutation S5, of five letters. So, uh, let's say we have the product of 1, 2, the cycle 1, 2, and then the cycle 3, 4, 5. Of course, these two cycles are disjoint, and therefore for the order, is 6, 2 times, so 2 here times uh, 3 here. And on the other hand, for example, in S5, there does not exist any cycle of order 8. And why is this? Well, because you can, you could not so how many how many disjoint cycles could you write in F, in S five well at most five uh, I mean you would have at most a, an expression like this where even maybe I am allowing for some cycle to be trivial uh, so the, the identity and you cannot have more than these if you want the cycles to to, to be to be disjoint right and so of course to have the least common multiple of these uh, equal to eight, then you will have to have a cycle of a length or order eight, which in S5 is not possible. So this is, is the reason. Okay, so let's move on and now compute the parity or what's called the sign also of uh, these permutations in our in stabilizer group. And it's also called the sign permutation. So here the parity of permutation can be defined as the parity of the of the number of transpositions in um, in the expression, so you know that uh, any permutation can be written as uh, a product of transpositions, which means just cycles of length two, and of course in this case not disjoint, not necessarily disjoint, but it is always possible to do so, and it's also another easy exercise to to show this fact. So the parity of the permutation. Uh, so the interesting fact is that, of course, you could you could write, uh, you could express one permutation in different ways as a product of transpositions, but what stays invariant is always the the sign. So the the parity of this number. So if you have an even number of transpositions, then you say that the parity is, is even or the sign is one. And if you have an odd number, then you say that the sign is minus one, or the parity is odd, odd permutations, and so on. So here, <clears throat> in our case, we see that, uh, well, here we have just a single 
cycle of, of length uh, two, but this doesn't matter. But so here, these are odd, obviously odd uh, permutations. This is it's expressed as the as the product of one transposition. These are all um, even. So the sign of those is uh, plus one, and we are left only with mm. with the question of uh, what is the what is the parity of uh, sigma six <clears throat> and sigma seven? So mm, the intuition here is that mm, very likely we can express this sigma six and sigma seven as product of these other elements. So let's, for example, um, write down, say, the product of uh, sigma four and sigma one. I am proceeding in a more or less experimental way. So let's see what we get here. Well, uh, so there's the element one, two, three, four. Where is this sent? So one is sent by sigma one to two, and then by sigma four, two is sent to three. So one is sent to three here. Two is sent by first by one, uh, to one by sigma one, and then Sigma four sends the one to four, and then three is sent, sent to two, and therefore one four is must be sent to one. So this, um, of course, as a cycle, is written as one equals to three equals to. Uh, one, 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 sorry, yes, one goes to three, then three goes to two, then two goes to four, and then of course four goes to one. And you see that this precise sigma six, right? Yeah. Um, therefore, of course, sigma six is written. As sigma four times sigma one, which is equal to one four two three one two. So this is a product of three transpositions. So this is an odd permutation. In other words, so you. You count count the number of cycles yeah, or cycles of order two. So there are three. This is odd. Um, then okay, what do we do? Okay. Similarly, I will compute sigma three. And sigma one or sigma, let's try sigma two. So this is now sigma two sends uh, sends uh, well one an hour. So sigma three sends one to three. Then two is sent to four. Now three is sent first to four, and then to two, and then to four is sent to one. Now this again as a product of cycles. Let's see. I write one, three, two, four. So this is one cycle, one, two, three, one, three, two, four, and this is precisely sigma six again. Okay. So that was a try. <laughs> so let's try sigma three times sigma one.
Okay, so what does this do? One is sent to the first two by sigma one, and that's sigma three sends two to four. So we use one to four, then two is sent to one, and then four. No, that is not the times root. Two is sent to one, and then one is sent to three. It was a mistake. Next. 3 is sent to 1. Yes. And then 4 necessarily is sent to the remaining one, which is 2. So this is a cycle or product. Let's see. 1, 4, 2, 3. And this is psi root as 5. So we found or S7. So as sigma 7, sorry, sigma 7, which is written as sigma 3 times sigma 1, and this is equal to the product of three transposition, right? Namely 1, 3 times 2, 4 times L1, 2. So again, we have a bouquet of flowers with three with three leaves and so this is also an odd permutation good now we computed the parity for all the permutations on our side subgroup now at the beginning of the exercise i mentioned the fact that we can interpret the situation as an action of the, the symmetric group s4 on say the polynomial ring for example so the the question here one one thing we could uh, we could do in order to explore a bit these notions is uh, to compute what is the orbit of the group s4 on this element this polynomial f that we used so far in the exercise in other words what is what is the orbit of the whole group action see s4 on the element f for our element just like before of course we could also compute it for other elements but let's now focus on this so maybe we can use what we've done so far okay so first of all what do we expect um, in general what we know is that by a finite group acting on some set we have a rule uh, that is that the order of the say of the um, of the orbit so what do we expect for how many elements we expect in this orbit uh, of course there would be at most um, 24 which is the order of s4 but we know more we know that the product of this with uh, the product of the stabilizer for this uh, the stabilizer of f for this action has to be equal to the total uh, order of the group which is 4 factorial so this is 24 and the order of the stabilizer stabilizer is the subgroup f that we computed before and we know that this is 8 and so we get that the orbit consists of only three elements of, of which one will be f of course so let's find the orbit now my guess well of course in order to find the, the orbit we could uh, start acting on f with some bunch of elements uh, it would be smart to use elements outside the stabilizer of f since we know that this will not make much change and since we know that the order of this orbit has to be three well then when why not starting by uh, acting with one element of length of order three for example uh, the idea just pick the cycle one two three and s4 
and start, which of course is all order three, and start to act on f. So sigma f is given by what? Um, so x, x1 is n times 2, and x2 times 2. And then x3 is n to x1, and x4 is n to xn. So this is clearly not, uh, is not equal to n. So we found another polynomial in the orbit. Now let's compute the sigma of this new polynomial. So now we have a sigma square of f. Um, so this is sigma of this previous one, and then 2 is n to 3. So we have x3, then 3 is n to 1, x1, 1 is n to 2, x2, and 4 is n to xn. So this is uh, x1, x3, and you see that this is, in fact, also different from f, and also different from uh, sigma. So, so there, then we have it. We have, you know, we, we have found our orbit. In other words, what we have proved, to be more precise, is that the orbit S4 of f is equal to the orbit given by the subgroup generated by this sigma. So it's actually an orbit of a, cyc of a cyclic group. And this concludes this exercise.